dynamic is a synonym for change. So that's the gimmick is that these will change over time. He's really offering something more than just the art. All right, welcome back guys. My name is Andre, here my with my guy Kenny. Kenny. Um, and we are the Incline NFT Podcast. Um, we're here to kind of talk about all things NFT and introduce you into the world of NFTs. In today's episode, uh, we're gonna talk about a few different kind of business applications for NFTs and just kind of some ideas. And we'll end off um, with uh, our personal opinions on kind of the direction of NFTs, where we, where we think um, they could be going in the, the pretty near future. Yeah, so this podcast, I wanted to talk about the flexibility of fungibility. Um, we've been talking a lot about art and collectibles and music, but there really is no space that this uh, technology cannot apply to. And that's what I realized the other day. So I wanted to talk about, you know, some of the more creative ways NFTs are being used that seem creative now, but it really is a no brainer the more you think about it. Go ahead and get into the screen sharing. Let me. Uh, so, we're going to be looking at LaMelo Ball's dynamic NFTs. And dynamic is just another new creative way people are introducing their NFTs. And dynamic is a synonym for change. So, that's the gimmick is that these will change over time, which is very cool, in my opinion. Yeah. And what, and what attracted me to these NFTs is that. Or I'll just read it. LaMelo Ball collectibles contain uh, supercharged NFTs tethered to an NBA uh, phenomenon or phenom uh, LaMelo Ball statistics, awards, and highlights. Um, owners of the NFTs will be entered into a into verifiably random draws to win um, never-before-seen memorabilia, participate in uh, LaMelo's endorsement deals, and unlock VIP access to an exclusive chat group with LaMelo himself. Um, so a lot, a whole lot of unlockable content here with these NFTs. That's why, number one, I think it's a very good investment. And number two, because I do like the Bella Ball, and I think he is going to actually get Rookie of the Year. So these are going to be increasing in, um, in worth here pretty soon, very, very soon. And can we just take some time to appreciate that art, though? Like, that art is pretty uh, amazing. It's pretty amazing animation, you know? Yeah, the digital work is is fire for sure. Whoever the graphic artist is, uh, hit me up. <laughs> so the cheapest one is going to be the Red Mars? So, yeah, the Red Mars point zero one, um, point one, and then 1E, 2.6E. And as you can see, the benefits change with the, you know what I'm saying, as the expense goes up. Um, so you win one gold Evolve NFT, um, surprise endorsement, dual rewards. So I'm, I'm assuming that when whenever he has like maybe some merchandise drops as like shoes or clothes, um, you might get a discount or you may get some free stuff. Maybe, I don't know, a chance to win official of France merchandise monthly. So LaMelo was on a France, a French team before he was in the league. So I'm assuming he's going to get some kind of exclusive uh, French merchandise. So if you're into like collecting act physical collectibles for um, athletes, as far as like some of their alternate, like maybe some of like the USA jerseys, the Olympic jerseys, this is going to be worth some money one day. Some of his um, La France stuff, um, chances to win NBA game tickets. So, which is also more value raffles and then future bonuses. So like, I, I really like the fact that these are going to change over time and, and you could just appreciate the work, um, the, the thought, put behind these so these are already on sale I, so. I honestly appreciate the price too 0 0.01 and 0 0.1 are great uh low barriers to entry right. for real fans like people who are actually fans of lamello uh you know a lot of us don't have one eth or 2.6 2.6 2 yeah the drop is it the, now how many tokens are there going to be you can see right here there it's already dropped so the sale started on the fourth um, you can see how many they have available. So this is kind of his own marketplace right here, just like his own little open sea. So, which is really cool. Um, you can see that looks like, I guess the, the least they made was the more, the most expensive ones, which makes sense. Um, and so it looks like there's a lot of them that, that are going around, which kind of shows that these are, uh, risky, I guess you could say. But, um, if you think about the price of the, uh, the value of whatever, I'm not sure what blockchain this is on. Ethereum. So yeah, if it's okay, yeah, if it's on Ethereum, um, you can imagine as Ethereum goes up in value, these are also going to go up in value as well. So 
to me, it looks like a good. Uh, so I guess because the rookie, um, the rookie voting is about to be up here pretty soon. So they're assuming that LaMelo is going to get that rookie of the year. So I guess this one is going to change here pretty soon if he does get that title, this gold one. I mean, it's going to follow him throughout his career, too. And so yeah. that's what's so cool about this is, yeah, it's re- it's really creative. It's really flexible, as we said before. Like, right. uh, people who are bringing these um, new ideas to the blockchain, I just really appreciate, I appreciate it. I do. Yeah, and one thing I wanted, I did want to mention is that I, I really can't think of any better way to support an athlete, um, especially because if you think about all of the college athletes um, that are going unpaid as a former athlete myself, um, I, I just can't imagine any better way to support. Because if you think about buying athletes clothes, then you know some of the money is going through you know, the NBA and other entities. But in this way, it looks like he's minted his own collectibles and he's going to have, he he set the royalty amount on these, which I'm not sure what the royalty is, but it's probably around 10%. Um, so 10% of all these sales are probably going back to LaMelo, uh, which is very powerful um, for all athletes. And this is just one application that it kind of blows my mind, but I will be investing um, here pretty soon. Yeah. Well, it's an easy way for him to connect with his fan base because uh, like the next thing we're going to talk about it's like the art is kind of a side note, you know, like in this yeah, case, the art, yeah, no. in this case, the art is a side note. It's very cool, but really it's like, you know, you get exclusive access to LaMelo. You, so if you want to do it. So Carrie V friends is uh, doing a similar thing to what LaMelo ball was doing. He's really offering something more than just the art with his NFTs. You get the ability to go to his conferences and for 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 a long time, I'm pretty sure, right? Like three years. Oh yeah, for th- for three years, yeah, is what it says right here. And so if you went to one and you felt like you got all you needed out of that, you can go ahead and sell that NFT. And then after you know, after those three years, he <laughs> th- he could offer more if he wanted to, or you know, those collectibles could just live as collectibles and they still have value. Yeah, on that point, actually, I'm just thinking about it, that three-year admission, because after you go once, you could basically get your money back and resell it. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. It's like it's a good investment, and you get to go listen to – if you if you haven't listened to Gary Vee, you should, because I he's, mean, like he's a, a really inspiring person. Public speaker. Yeah, he's a really good public speaker at this point. It's very applicable, so shout-out to Gary Vee, man. Big, up, big, big, big ups to yeah, Gary Vee. Yeah, his message is all about is not – it's not as hard as you're making it. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like uh, every business entrepreneurship endeavor, and you should see when he goes to flip stuff. But okay, we're we're getting on. Yeah, on we're track. getting in, we're getting into Gary Vee stuff. We're getting yeah. on track now. Um, but let's talk about some of his collectibles, though. Yeah, let's see some of these. What, what's the cheapest one? Let's see if we could get it because man, they've been selling. I would buy one, but I seen you know. Yeah, these are so these I've so seen them for, go for expensive. Ten thousand dollars right here. These are so these are ten thousand. Um, we can look at Gary's own personal collection because I guess he has his own collection that he sold um on this website. It doesn't have any prices on it. Let's go to explore friends. Oh that's what's really cool. I love how you cannot list something, but people can still see that you own it and then they can make you an offer. I love that. Oh, okay. So I was wondering that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And, yeah. That's probably and, yeah. Oh, that's an animal. Interesting. 0. 0.5. Arbitrage. Is, that is that 0. 0.5 yeah. or 8.5? That's 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6. Not bad. One articulate armadillo is one whole ETH. Uh, we can go to the next page. So Hungry it, Hammerhead. If you want one with the intention of going to his conference, it's basically like a $1,000 uh, investment. But, I mean, I was just looking at Chance the Rapper tickets, and and this goes back into the flexibility thing. Is like concert tickets could easily do this, you know, if you're a fan of somebody. Right. Um, and, you know, Chance the Rapper is a, is a good example because I was watching his shows or wanting to watch his shows when his shows cost $20, $30, you know? Right. 
So I've seen a couple. I've, I've seen Chance the Rapper before he was. I, I saw him at Jambalaya in Dallas. Um, and the tickets were like thirty five bucks. And that was that was like nine nine eight nine years ago. You know. So imagine if you could invest in somebody that you know is coming up that everybody's going to see his show anyway, but this is, they just cost $35 yeah. right now. Uh, right. And that artist allows you to basically go to their upcoming concerts perpetually with their NFTs. And as they become a Jay-Z, so will that NFT, that the value of that NFT will go yeah. up as well. So you can imagine. Or if the artist like just makes the ticket um, an NFT, and then the, just the resale value of the ticket would be kind of crazy because people are already selling like tickets, like vintage tickets to like Elvis shows and things like that. And those are going the for kind of crazy money right now. So it, the t-shirts, t-shirts the merchandise, yeah. the merchandise Kanye, from these places. Kanye t-shirts. Yeah, I mean, yep. they, they go for expensive. If you can prove that you got it at the place, it doesn't even have to be legitimate merch too. Like some, some merch sellers go to a concert and their merch ends up retaining value because they were the ones who were there, you know? So, so yeah, people will come to the to the concert with their own printed shirts and make a fortune, um, just because people are looking for that merch. This stuff is a little bit more complicated, but it can be really simple too. Like, you could have NFT to just sell a T-shirt. You could have, uh, you know, if you had a barbershop business, you could sell sessions with NFTs. And the only barrier to entry for that right now is uh, your cuts consumer base having cryptocurrency or ether Crypto, whatever right. your, but really it's just like it's easier than setting up a shopify or an etsy or uh instagram Shop, business yeah. yeah it's much easier than that it's just that it's nobody less, really understands it yet yeah. um but like but we always say as, as people get um more and more educated about these nfts you're going to start seeing them more and more in your day, daily life so you know educate yourself be educated so when it comes to you know, when you get the opportunity be ready to jump on it because um you're going to be faced with some options at first but then it's going to kind of be not necessarily forced upon you but it's there's going to be some things that you're going to have to have crypto for you're going to have to have nfts for eventually um in my opinion so keep it stay on i think it makes i think if it makes sense and it's if it's easier than what it is right now i think it is not maybe for, forcing a strong word but yeah, it's going to be prevalent enough to uh, make a difference within your life. For sure. And uh, yeah, there's going to be some businesses that are going to accept crypto exclusively and some who are going to reject crypto exclusively, I think. You know? Mark. Um, yeah, and it just goes back to that flexibility. It really, like, with this space, it's your creativity is the limit. It's however creative you want to mm-hmm. be as the creator of your NFT and um, you don't have to be a technological genius to work this stuff out. You really don't. You, you set a price, you set the conditions on your NFT, like this uh, NFT is one haircut or this gets one of my subscription boxes and you can go from there. And instead of people paying um, Crate Joy or you know some of the <laughs> platforms that already exist, uh, this platform is a decentralized version of e-commerce and trade and meaning a, meaning that no one controls it and no one is taking a percentage of your profit um if you do make this transaction and, you know and you can also set your own royalty amount so if your um, token or whatever it may be resells you keep 10 percent in perpetuity forever so that's the benefit of decentralization if you were already familiar so I mean, I've seen, people, I've seen people use it as a form of uh, validation or verification that whatever they're buying in real life is is real. So, you know, if you have yeah. a contract address on your actual product and you want to know that it's not fake, like I'm thinking about the, the THC cards that go around fraudulent, you know? I mean, something yeah. as simple as that could, well, let me check if this is actually from who, who it says it's from, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's and that's because the blockchain also acts sort of like a timestamp. Think about the blockchain is never changing and people cannot control what it looks like. It is what it is. So once that item is made, it's listed and you'll be able to go back and see 
when it was made, who it's been owned by since up to now. Um, so very valuable tool right there. That's the blockchain aspect of NFTs. So this is all working together at the same time. So, you know, we're kind of throwing a lot of stuff out there, but if you think about a Shopify meets the stock market, you know, meets commerce, it's, it's all in one. It's a, it's, it's a or Swiss army. Anything, anything really. That's, that's really the point is that I think that this could be applied to most everything that, that, re that requires a transaction. You know? Yeah, right. So now that being said, let's go into the craziest stories that we've heard lately. NFTs just got super weird. Cyborg Neil yeah. Hobson is selling access to his head. He has an antenna implanted into his skull. This allows him to feel and hear colors as audible vibrations. By selling access to his antenna, you can control his perception of color and alter his reality, sending colors directly into his head. He thought that was weird. Spanish artist Paul Lombarte is selling an NFT that allows you to control his heartbeat. He's going to wear an ECG sensor that sends his heartbeats direct to the internet. If he bought his NFT, you can send vibrations to his body to make changes to his heartbeat. Yes, this is dangerous. NFTs. <laughs> Yes, this is dangerous. And this is on NFT. This is NFTs. It's owned by Mark Cuban because he bought the copyright, but they're verified. So it's not like we're making this up. This up. So people putting NFTs into their sensors into their head that allows you as the buyer to change NFTs just oops, to change um, their sense of reality, I guess. I mean, how weird is this? Well, I mean, the title of this is NFTs don't necessarily need to be art. And, you know, I bet some people would argue that this isn't art, but I think it is like performative art. For sure. Know? Yeah. In I a mean, certain type of way. It takes some type of creativity to come up with this, this idea. You know, if anything, it's creative. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could say weird, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, but this just goes to show you that like, yeah, it doesn't have to be art. Imagine <laughs> NFT organ donations. <laughs> <laughs> you but, know, I was going to say this is why corporate health care and the government, for that matter, uh, they hate this technology, even if you see them take a step to be a part of it, because it's self-regulating. So if we regulate ourselves, you know, through, you know, if a black origin market is able to regulate itself through the blockchain, then what's the need of, you know, uh, corporate health care regulating organ yeah. donors? What's the need of government regulating that kind of stuff, you know? Right. True that. I mean, we got to be careful to talk about this, but like, it's, it's true that this is all decentralized and that the government will have no control, especially once these bigger and bigger companies, like there are companies out there that have more money than our own government. Um, so imagine like an Apple starting to implement NFTs. What can the government realistically do? You know what I mean? Yeah, all it they can do is at that, point. At, that like we're in a very precarious place right now because all they yeah. can do is either join it or or fight it incite fear. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now. So it's they don't know what they're gonna do yet, but they know that they're gonna have to do something. And the issue is there. So the issue with both of those options, so joining the government, then the government will have to relinquish some of its control over its people. Um, and I mean, fortunately for the people, but unfortunate for the government. And with uh, the government creating fear, in my personal opinion, I think that will only drive the, the value of uh, crypto up. Uh, if, if you think about the government creating fear and then um, kind of dissuading people from using this crypto, then these coins become more and more rare, therefore increasing the value. Um, so I, I think it's a win-win both ways for the users of these crypto coins. Um, but the, those that will fight against it, I think it's going to not benefit them, honestly, in the long run. Yeah, I mean, and old people, they might be able to get old people because... Sure, yeah. I mean, my dad, like, he doesn't understand. Sure. <laughs> you know, he's like, uh, yeah, but what about the liquidity? And we're like, dad, you don't get the long-term goal is that goal is that this is liquidity. You know, right. like, this is the dollar. This is, you yeah. know, the global dollar. And a good and a, and a good example um, for that is that um, a lot of old the older generation didn't understand Facebook and social media um, in its first inception. You know, I, I used to get in trouble. I used I was grounded for a period for a period of time for having a Facebook. So um, that just goes to show that there were, there's always there's always a fight when new when new technology is implemented. 
Um, but like I said, no one, not all people like Facebook and social media at first, but now it's almost the only way that you can keep up with people in, 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 in a very convenient way. You know what I'm saying? These, like your grandparents have want to see pictures of their grand, grandchildren. They got to go to Facebook for it. You know what I'm saying? The world is different. And I think in that way, not maybe necessarily exactly, but it's something similar is going to happen with NFTs to where they're going to not have no choice, but it's going to almost be taboo to not be using this technology because it's so convenient, you know? Yeah. And, you know, crazy creative things like this, even though on the mm-hmm. surface it might seem crazy and creative, it's really it's easy, just concept at the end of the day, you know? Sure. Sure. Uh, but Andre, you said a good thing, uh, a good point before. Um, yeah, we don't need stuff like this because if somebody has control of somebody else's heart, we don't want there to be an NFT, you know, killer or an NFT homicide. When it comes, right, I guess, right. I guess this it would be like, yeah, this this um, idea. In my, in my personal opinion, this is kind of detrimental to the world of NFTs. Um, when you start taking independent people and start doing things that involve, this is almost borderline medicine, you know what I'm saying, at, at this point. Um, and so in any other medicinal aspect of the world, you're going to have to, you know, have some time spent in medicine before you can work on people and start putting chips and wires and things like that into your brain. And I, is I think I, I think it's very irresponsible. And I don't know what kind of regulations followed came with this, so I might be speaking out of turn, but I do think this is, irresponsible um on these users well it will definitely help if they want to incite fear stuff like this will definitely help them yeah. incite fear you know uh yeah, and, I, and well. we got to be wary of the government kind of like you said i don't know if we should talk about like the bitcoin crash the recent crash like you were t- uh, we were talking about before that the government had basically made an encrypting app it was kind of trying to bust people using bitcoin illegally um, and this is kind of why people are saying that, or they're kind of blaming that on the recent crash um, in crypto. I mean, can we talk about that actually? Because we, t- we touched on that on a different podcast, the fungibility of Bitcoin. Yeah. And so like people think that Bitcoin is fungible and you can trade one Bitcoin for another. But so what happened with the government in the recent weeks proves that it's not because the government was able to seize uh, the cryptocurrency and basically take it out of circulation. So that that $50 million, I think it was, or something around that number, um, it is now less valuable as Bitcoins than the other Bitcoins that you or me might have in our wallet. So it's not, uh, it's not fungible. It's not non-fungible like these tokens, right, but right, that doesn't, right. you know, Right. But yeah, it's a fungibility issue for sure. True that. And I and I really personally wish that people would, um, you know, use everything for positive reasons. And, you know, uh, living in 2021, you, you got to be realistic and understand that not all technology is or has been used for solely good. Um, so you have to think uh, in creating regulations around this. That's one point that I think should be made, uh, should be brought up and that all technology has historically never always been used for good. Um, so because you there's can all kinda... types of people in every community True. who is using these technologies. True. Um, and one more in the crypto news, like I'm thinking like if, if this is a bad rep for NFTs, like we want to be showing that, you know, we're a respectable group of people, I guess. Of, of, edu- the... of educated, exactly, yeah. And I'm thinking, like, did you see on the news the Dogecoin? This guy, like, was at a Bitcoin conference and uh, he, like, ripped off his shirt and saying, Dogecoin to the moon. And I'm fucking love, I mean, I love Dogecoin. Please cut out the effing. I love Dogecoin, but we don't need people acting crazy. You know, we don't need people putting their lives in danger over non fungible tokens. We don't need right. streakers uh, for Dogecoin. Like, yeah. Because as much as we think it's going to be used in everyday to everyday life, um, the thing is, the more that we believe that, the more it becomes real. Is but the, the the more that the misuse is going to increase, you know. So I, I try to take these things with a grain of salt and hope that um, our officials will do the same thing. Um, but you know, there's no guarantees with any of this stuff, with any technology, really. But I would just hope that people be responsible. Um, with their use of, of NFTs, especially because this is a powerful tool 
for it's all really of us. It. And that's and on that same token, it is very creative, and a, a drug dealer could easily start, you know. Uh, on that same token, drugs. I like that one. I like the. the no uh, on that same token, that's actually good. <laughs> no fun intended there. But no yeah, fun. I mean, people can start uh, criminal businesses using this technology like fairly easy within five minutes. They can have NFTs up and put it under the guise of selling art, and really, like you know, they can sell other things. Sure. through that uh, so yeah we don't we don't need y'all to get too creative <laughs> <laughs> don't go get too creative now don't go, don't go get smart on us now because but yeah so, but we man. need um, and that's the thing like I would prefer this technology have a larger stake in our lives sooner mm -hmm. but the more stuff like you know Irresponsible uh, questionable things that are happening. Yeah. Yeah. The more qu the longer it's going to take to get there. So. Yeah. Like Uncle Ben. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Ben said, uh, "Great, great power comes great responsibility." So this is actually a powerful tool, guys. So treat it as such. Yeah, so and if you have a business or you know something else that you want to do, like might as well open the NFT market too. You never know if you have some customers who will mm -hmm. be accepting it. Uh, we got to be on the road to normalization i think yeah you know add another stream of income to you you know and it's very easy to get set up if you need help go to incline nft on instagram catch us on discord incline.com you can contact us through our email there and we will be happy to you know educate you on how to create a collection and how to get your nfts working for you on the blockchain hell yeah bro all right guys uh in closing here uh we talked a little bit about the uh, Lamella Ball NFT, then we went into that V Friends, and we also talked about kind of some of the technological, the weirder side of NFTs today. Um, but like we said, great power comes great responsibility. So be responsible, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Our next episode uh, it might be a Wallet Wednesday coming up soon. I'm not sure yet, but tune in next time. Um, this was the NFT, Incline NFT podcast. Thanks for watching.